Elvis Presley died today. He was 42. Apparently, it was a heart attack. He was found at his home in Memphis, not breathing. Did you know Elvis Presley might be alive? Nearly 50 years after the death of the rock and roll legend Elvis Presley, there have recently been surprising discussions about his tomb being opened. From rumors and believable proofs to gossip, there are a lot of sightings and conversations that hint at the icon being among us, breathing and well. The news of his tomb opening nearly 50 years after he was laid to rest spread like wildfire, with everybody wanting to know if it was true and what was in his tomb. Why do you think you've outlasted every other entertainer? I take vitamin E. I'm only kidding. I embarrass myself, man. I, I don't know, dear. I enjoy the business. I like what I'm doing. What are the numerous sightings of the rock and roll legend, and why is it actually possible his death was staged? Brace yourself, because what was discovered in his tomb shocked the whole world. From humble beginnings to international fame, Recently, the rumor mill began churning with whispers that the tomb of the legendary Elvis Presley was opened up. The start of the rumor seems as mysterious as the king himself. The rumor is believed to have started on online forums that Elvis Presley's family had plans to reveal the secrets of his final resting place. It's unclear who first mentioned the possibility of the tomb's opening, but once the idea was out there, it spread like wildfire across forums and online Elvis communities. What could be sparking rumors like this? Some people believe that Elvis actually faked his own death. Supporters of this idea point to several pieces of evidence. One of their most convincing points is the strange hints people have noticed about his tombstone. His middle name, Aaron, is strangely spelled as Aaron on the grave marker. Proponents would argue that this could be a subtle clue left by Elvis himself to show that his burial was not legitimate. But what was in his tomb? Before we reveal more proof to you, it is essential we first journey into the life of the legend and reveal all that happened leading up to his sad death. Elvis Aaron Presley, born on January 8, 1935 in Tupelo, Mississippi, was the second child of his parents. Sadly, his twin brother Jesse was stillborn, leaving Elvis to grow up as an only child. Despite the financial struggles faced by his hardworking parents, Elvis's early years were filled with modesty and simplicity. His mother, despite the hardships, ensured that his life was filled with love and music. The Presley family was deeply religious, and Elvis's initial exposure to music came from the vibrant gospel tunes he heard in church. Even at a young age, Elvis's voice stood out. At just 10 years old, he won a talent show with his rendition of Old Shep. It was a clear proof of his natural talent and love for music. The Presley family moved to Memphis for better opportunities, hoping to improve their lives. It was in Memphis that Elvis Presley started to develop his own unique style. He became deeply involved in the vibrant music scene centered around Beale Street, the heart of Memphis's thriving music culture. It didn't take long for Elvis to become fascinated by music, and soon, he picked up the guitar. His mother bought him his first guitar for his 11th birthday, a decision that would change his life forever and set him on the path to fame and success. Elvis attended L.C. Humes High School, where he stood out as somewhat of a loner. He was different from his classmates with his slick back hair and unique fashion choices, such as pink shirts and black slacks. Unfortunately, his unique style made him a target for bullying, as some of his peers teased him for being a mama's boy and for his eclectic taste in music. During high school, Elvis actively participated in talent shows and musical events. He involved himself in learning everything he could about music, soaking up every bit of musical knowledge available to him. Then, it was star time. Elvis Presley's journey from humble beginnings to global stardom all began at the annual minstrel show, where Elvis's magical performance of Till I Waltz Again With You left the audience in awe. From that moment, it was clear that he had a rare gift, and his confidence only grew with each subsequent performance. After graduating in 1953, Elvis took on various jobs to make ends meet, but his passion for music never waned. There's evidence of this 
as his presence on the music charts literally had no match. With an impressive 149 songs making it onto the Billboard Hot 100 pop chart in America. Of those, 114 reached the top 40, 40 reached the top 10, and an impressive 18 claimed the number one spot. Elvis's string of number one singles alone spent 80 weeks at the pinnacle of the charts. His record sales were equally staggering, with estimates of over 1 billion records sold worldwide, making him the best-selling solo artist in the history of recorded music. Elvis Presley was also not just a singer, he also acted in movies, and he was extremely successful in both. He made 31 movies, and they all made him lots of money. People loved watching him on the big screen as much as listening to him sing. He was super famous for both. Even on TV, Elvis was a big deal. He did three specials, one in 1968 called Comeback, which was super popular. People still talk about how great it was. He won three Grammy Awards, which are like the biggest prizes in music. He also received a special Grammy when he was only 36, awarded to people who've done amazing things in music for a long time. Elvis didn't just stick to one kind of music, he was outstanding in lots of different styles. It's no surprise he's in so many halls of fame. They're places where they celebrate the best musicians in various types of music. Elvis is in the pop, country, rockabilly, rhythm and blues, adult contemporary, and gospel halls of fame. That's a lot. Even though he didn't perform much outside the United States, people worldwide still love Elvis. They listen to his music and watch his movies, and they can't get enough of him. So even though he's not around anymore, his music and films make people happy everywhere. Elvis Presley did shows in Las Vegas and went on tours and people adored him. He had this way of performing that was so special, full of energy and feeling. Nobody else could quite do what he did. He was like a magnet on stage, drawing everyone in with his presence, his musical and acting prowess. His concert attendances were always insane. People came from everywhere to see him perform. He broke records for how many people showed up. He was just that good. But then, something terrible happened. On August 16, 1977, the legend Elvis Presley died. He was only 42 years old. When the news got out, it spread fast. Fans all over the world couldn't believe it. They were sad and shocked. Ever since, people have been trying to figure out what happened. There are all sorts of stories and ideas about how he died. It has become a major mystery that people still talk about today. Elvis was discovered unresponsive on the floor of his bathroom in his Graceland mansion in Memphis, Tennessee by his then fiance Ginger Alden. In a panic, she immediately summoned help and Elvis was swiftly transported to Baptist Memorial Hospital. Despite the medical team's efforts, all attempts to revive him proved futile. Tragically, he was pronounced dead at 3.30 p.m., making it the end of an era and leaving a permanent void in the world of music and entertainment. The official reason they say Elvis died was because he had a heart attack. But when a doctor, Dr. Jerry Francisco, inspected his body to see what happened, they found out it was more complicated than just that. He saw that Elvis's heart was much bigger than it should be, almost twice as big as normal. They call this problem hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This probably made his heart suddenly stop, leading to his death. When an autopsy was done to check what was in Elvis's body, the lab scientists found a bunch of different prescription drugs. They found high amounts of drugs like opiates, which are strong painkillers, barbiturates, which can make you sleep, and sedatives, which can relax you. Elvis had been using these drugs for a long time because he was addicted to them. People who were close to him knew about this because he had been fighting this addiction for years. He would ask his doctor, whom people called Dr. Nick, to give him these drugs whenever he wanted them. Dr. Nick would give Elvis all sorts of medicines like Quaaludes and Demerol. In the months before he died, Elvis's health was getting worse and worse. He had put on quite a bit of weight and his performances were becoming more unpredictable. Often, when he appeared on stage, he seemed lost, forgetting lyrics and struggling to stay in sync with the music. 
even his entourage, which included his manager, Colonel Tom Parker, started to worry about his health, but they felt powerless to do anything about it. One particularly memorable incident occurred during his famous 1973 Aloha from Hawaii concert. He had lyric cards for the song Burning Love held up for him on stage. Some fans claimed he hardly glanced at them, suggesting that just having them there provided a safety net he hadn't needed. These fans argued that his struggles weren't due to substance abuse, as some had thought, but rather were a quirk that Elvis had dealt with throughout his career. They pointed to the 68 comeback special, where he had difficulty remembering lyrics to his songs. But when he did forget lyrics, he became humorous and interactive with the audience, turning a potential mishap into a charming moment. On the day Elvis died, he couldn't sleep at all. He stayed awake through the night, taking several doses of his prescribed medications. Around 2.30 a.m., he went to the bathroom where he often spent long periods reading. It was there that his fiance, Ginger, found him hours later, lying unconscious on the floor. The news of Elvis's death shocked not only the music industry, but also people worldwide. Fans mourned him, holding candlelight vigils and leaving flowers at the gates of Graceland. The media frenzy was crazy, with reporters and photographers rushing to Memphis to cover the story. In the following weeks and months, questions arose about the circumstances of his death. Many fans couldn't accept that their idol had died from something as ordinary as a heart attack. Rumors spread about possible foul play or a cover-up. After the passing of the icon, things quickly took a strange turn. The doctor's medical career took a nosedive as he was brought into the legal spotlight due to his prescription practices. In 1980, Dr. Nick faced indictment on 14 counts of overprescribing drugs, not just to Elvis, but also to other high-profile figures like Jerry Lee Lewis, as well as other patients. Despite the gravity of the charges, he was acquitted, but the scrutiny did not stop there. The Tennessee Medical Board took action, shocking the entire medical community by permanently revoking his medical license. This decision was because of findings that he had been overprescribing to patients for years. Unfortunate and frightening incidents also filled Dr. Nick's life. In 1979, he was shot in the chest while watching a football game. Miraculously, he escaped serious injury, but the incident remained mysterious, as no suspect was ever arrested. There were speculations surrounding the shooting, with some suggesting it could have been the act of an angry Elvis fan. Elvis's burial was a grand and deeply emotional affair, fitting for the king of rock and roll. He was laid to rest at the Meditation Garden at Graceland, his iconic mansion in Memphis, Tennessee. This garden held a serene and beautiful atmosphere, often visited by Elvis himself for moments of reflection and solace. The burial ceremony took place on August 18, 1977, just two days after his untimely passing. It was a private event attended by family, close friends, and a select few from the industry. Despite its private nature, thousands of devoted fans gathered outside the gates to pay respects and bid farewell to their beloved music idol. The meditation garden was adorned with floral arrangements, including a stunning array of red roses, Elvis's favorite flower. The garden's centerpiece was a magnificent fountain and fitting environment for the sad occasion. Elvis's casket is crafted from solid copper and lined with velvet. The burial service was a moving tribute, filled with heartfelt eulogies and musical performances. The Reverend C.W. Bradley, who had officiated Elvis and Priscilla's marriage just years earlier, presided over the ceremony. Family members and close friends took turns sharing their cherished memories and expressing their love for the fallen star. Gospel singers, including J.D. Sumner and the Stamps Quartet, performed some of Elvis's favorite hymns. Their voices filled the air with hope and celebration amidst the sorrow as the ceremony drew close. Elvis's casket was lowered into the ground, marking his final resting place. Today, visitors to Graceland pay their respects at the Meditation Garden, where Elvis lies next to his parents, Vernon and Gladys, and his grandmother, Minnie Mae. Regarding people's opinions about his open coffin, there are more signs he's probably alive. 
In the 1990 movie Home Alone, there's a scene at the airport that sparked speculation. Behind Catherine O'Hara's character, who plays the mother, a figure stands. This figure, a bearded gentleman dressed in a turtleneck and sports coat, has caught the attention of many viewers. His presence is subtle yet interesting, positioned just over O'Hara's left shoulder. Many see a striking resemblance between this figure and what an older Elvis Presley might look like. His eyes, the shape of his face, and even his posture evoke a sense of familiarity reminiscent of the iconic rock and roll legend. This is another supposed evidence. The beard is a particular point of interest. It's thick, well-groomed, and covers much of his lower face, which some suggest could be an effective disguise. Although it's not the clean-cut look often associated with Elvis, it adds to the mystery about his presence in the scene. Was this deliberate camouflage or simply a fashion choice of a background extra? Then there's the body language. The man appears to give off a certain impatience and silent discontent with the situation happening before him. This small yet important detail is part of mannerisms that are like what you would expect from a former star now sidelined to the background, having to observe rather than being in the spotlight. His outfit too drew attention. The sports coat and turtleneck are timeless classic choices that easily fit the image of what Elvis might wear. They mirror a particular era and style that are very similar to the aesthetic of the king of rock and roll. The rumors about Elvis's death also include a certain handwriting analysis. Some experts who study handwriting have closely examined Elvis's signatures. They claim that his autographs from the years after his reported death look suspiciously different from his earlier ones. They also claim even his death certificate was written in his own handwriting. They suggest that this could be evidence that someone else was signing on his behalf to maintain the illusion that he had died. Could this be true? Well, believing this rumor might be difficult. But how about the fact that despite being a beloved public figure, his funeral was relatively small and private? His body was placed in a heavy copper coffin, which some argue would be unnecessarily heavy unless it was actually empty. But what makes the whole thing even more confusing is that when his tomb was opened, Elvis was still in it, lying motionless like he probably has for the past 50 years. While he hasn't been very interested in this news, most of Elvis's fans are displeased about his tomb being opened, the death of an icon and more rumors following it. Regarding Elvis's funeral, skeptics point out that it took place quickly after his death was announced, leading them to question whether the hasty proceedings were designed to avoid scrutiny. Over the years, many people have claimed to have seen Elvis alive and well, long before his reported death. The sighting was of a man resembling Elvis reportedly purchasing a one-way plane ticket to Buenos Aires under John Burroughs, an alias that Elvis was known to have used. As you would expect, news of this sighting spread a wildfire. Fast forward to the end of 1977, and a photograph taken by a man visiting Graceland surfaced. The photo appeared to show Elvis lounging in his pool house, making everyone wonder whether he had actually died or if his death was staged. The debate about the figure in the photo is still ongoing, with some insisting it's Elvis Presley himself. In the 1980s, Kalamazoo, Michigan became a hotspot for Elvis enthusiasts, with many people claiming to have seen the king alive and well, carrying on as if he'd never left the stage. That's not all. Then there was the mysterious phone call in 1988, where a voice eerily resembling Elvis's declared the king was alive and ready for a comeback. Whether a prank or not, it encouraged the persistent conspiracy theories surrounding Elvis's death. Sightings continued, even extending to musical releases. In 1988, a song titled Spelling on the Stone surfaced, credited to an anonymous artist, leading many to believe it was Elvis himself singing from beyond the grave or from a covert hideout. As years passed, Elvis was allegedly seen at the grand opening of California's Legoland, although it was later revealed that impersonators were hired for the event. Regardless, the initial claims got Elvis devotees very excited. 
The Weekly World News tabloid kept the Elvis sighting saga alive with articles detailing his supposed adventures post-1977. They created the impression of a world adventurous Elvis who faked his death to escape the limelight and live anonymously. Some believers thought Elvis left cryptic clues in his music and album artwork, citing songs like I'll Never Know and Way Down containing lyrics hinting at his plans to vanish. The album cover for Promised Land shows Elvis wearing a white suit. Some think it represents him going to a higher place. They say this because when Elvis died, he was found in a strange position with his pajama bottoms down. Some people think the report about how he died was changed. Elvis was famous for his flashy stage outfits. It was a big act of rebellion against everyone watching him. Some people think Elvis faked his death to escape fame. They believe he wanted a new life away from cameras and gossip. He might have wanted to walk around without anyone recognizing him. Money could also be a reason. Maybe Elvis was tired of spending so much and having people manage his finances. Faking his death might have let him live quietly without money worries. Another idea is that Elvis planned a big comeback. People absolutely love stories about someone coming back from the dead. If Elvis did it, it would shock the world. It would be a huge moment in music history. Legacy is important, especially for someone as famous as Elvis. Maybe he wanted to stay forever young in people's memories. Dying could keep his legend perfect. Looking at it another way, think about how much control people naturally want in life. Elvis had little control over his privacy, image, or even personal choices. Pretending to die might have been his way of finally taking control. It could have been the one decision entirely his, a secret he kept close, a final act on his own terms. One big thing Elvis left behind is the massive fan following he gained after he passed away. Some fans take their love for him to extreme levels. It's not just about enjoying his music, it's a whole lifestyle. They do everything from visiting his home, Graceland, to competing in tribute contests. A really interesting part of this fan culture is the Elvis tribute artist culture. All around the world, fans dress up in fancy jumpsuits, style their hair just like his, and even imitate his voice and moves. They enter contests where judges look not just at how well they sing, but also how much they can capture Elvis's charm and stage presence. It's amazing how much attention they pay to every little detail from his gestures to how he talks. There's more. Every year there's something called Elvis Week. It happens at Graceland, which was Elvis's old home and is now a museum. People who love Elvis from around the world come to Memphis for it. They come to celebrate his life. They do things like light candles, make fancy art about him, and trade rare items that belong to him. There's a lot of music, people telling stories, and everyone is friendly with each other. Some of Elvis's fans are really serious about him. They don't just like his music, they almost worship him. They think of him as a religious leader, almost like Jesus. When they get together, they do things like going to church. They sing songs and talk about how much they love him. For them, Elvis is a symbol of love and togetherness. In Las Vegas, there's a weird thing where people get married to someone who looks like Elvis. They can have a fake Elvis marry them and sing Elvis songs while they say their vows. It's a mix of funny and sweet, which many people want for their wedding in Vegas. On the internet, Elvis fans have made online groups where they talk about him. They share videos of his concerts that aren't easy to find. They talk about how he's affected their lives. Some even pretend to be Elvis in stories they make up. It's a way for them to feel closer to him and other people who love him. Usually many people really enjoy collecting things. It's a common thing, but some are pretty much obsessed with Elvis Presley. They go all out, setting up entire rooms or even their whole house just to show off their Elvis collection. They gather everything Elvis related, like records, concert posters, and even personal items that might have once belonged to the man himself. People are always on the hunt for these special items. The rarer something is, the more people want it. This creates a big trade among collectors. Some Elvis fans take their devotion a step further. They get tattoos of Elvis. These tattoos are like permanent marks of respect for the king of rock and roll. 
Fans might get Elvis's face inked on their skin, or maybe some of his song lyrics or even his signature. These tattoos are like badges of honor showing that the person is a true fan. Some tattoos are really simple while others are extremely detailed. Some fans cover a lot of their body with Elvis tattoos, not to mention the weird trend of making pets look like Elvis. It is pretty unsettling, but some fans really love it. They'll dress up their pets, especially their hound dogs, in tiny Elvis costumes. These outfits even come with little wigs and sunglasses. These Elvis pets often show up at fan gatherings and parades. They're a hit with everyone who sees them, bringing smiles to people's faces. As Elvis's fame grew, so did his impact on popular culture. His unique blend of rock and roll, gospel, and country music surpassed boundaries and brought people together from all walks of life. Through his music, Elvis broke down barriers and challenged societal norms. Dead or alive, he will always be remembered. Thank you for watching this video, and we hope to see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video.